A generator is an elegant way to create custom iterators in Python that make it really easy to work with iterators. If you haven't watched our video about iterators yet, I suggest you watch that video first before you proceed. In this video, we will learn to create and use generators in our Python programs with the help of examples. Now, why generators? Before we learn about generators, let's see an example of an iterator implemented in Python. Let me run this code. And you can see that a sequence of numbers 2, 4, and 6 is generated. To generate this, we have created a custom iterator inside the event class. For an object to be an iterator, it should implement the iter method, which will return the iterator object, the next method, which will return the next value in the stream, and possibly raise the stop iteration exception when there are no values to be returned. As you can see, the process of creating iterators is both lengthy and counterintuitive. Generators come to the rescue in such situations. Python generators are a simple way of implementing iterators. All the work we mentioned above are automatically handled by generators. Now let's see how we can use generators to create iterators. I have this code from the last section that creates a sequence of even numbers. Let me first remove this even class. Now let's implement this same iterator using a generator. A generator is simply a function, but with slight modifications. In a generator function, we use the yield keyword to get the next item of the iterator. Let's see how. First, I'll create a generator function named even underscore generator and also change this to even underscore generator. So let me remove this and I'll call it even underscore generator. Now let me define the even underscore generator function. I'll say def even underscore generator. Inside this, for now, I'll just say pass. Now inside of this function, I will use the yield keyword instead of the return keyword to yield the next value without terminating the function. So here, I'll start with n equals 0. And then n, I'll increase the value of n by 2 and yield n and then I'll again increase the value of n by 2 and yield n. And again, let me increase the value of n by 2 and yield n. And let me remove this pass. Let's see from the very beginning what this code is doing. First, I've created a generator function that has three yield statements. There should be an n here. When we call this function, it returns a generator which is an iterator object. Then we have called the next method to retrieve elements from this object. This code gives us the value of the first yield, which is two in this case. This code will give us the value of the next yield, which is n equals zero plus two plus two, which is four. And this code gives me the value of the third yield, which is six. The difference between return and yield is that the return statement terminates the function completely while the yield statement pauses the function saving all its states for next successive calls. So when we call the next function for the second and third time, it gave us the values of four, which is the second yield and six, which is the third yield. Let me run this code so that you can see it for yourself. So when I run this code, you can see that the same old numbers of 2, 4, and 6 were generated. That means our generator is working correctly. However, as of yet, it only returns the first three even numbers. I will now implement a loop to make this generator return even numbers till a certain max number. And here, I'll pass in a parameter called max. Now, let me remove this old code. Now, I'll say n equals 2. And then, I'll start a while loop. So, I'll say while n less than equals max yield n and then increase the value of n by 2. Now I'll say numbers equals even underscore generator 4. When I press run, then you can see that 2 and 4 are generated and after that a stop iteration exception is raised. Let's compare this generator code with our custom iterator code. Notice how we have never explicitly defined the iter method, next method, or raised a stop iteration exception. 
They are handled implicitly by generators, making our program and our life much simpler and easier to understand. By the way, if you're finding these videos useful, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. Iterators and generators are generally used to handle a large stream of data, theoretically even an infinite stream of data. These large streams of data cannot be stored in memory at once. To handle this, we can use generators to handle only one item at a time. Now let's build a generator to produce an infinite stream of Fibonacci numbers. For those of you who don't know, the Fibonacci series is a series where the next element is the sum of the last two elements. So I'll go to my text editor. First, I'll create a generator function named generate underscore Fibonacci and call it. Here, I'll say def generate underscore Fibonacci. And then inside this, I'll just write pass and let me call the generate underscore Fibonacci function. It should be Fibonacci. Okay. Now inside this function, I will create the first two elements of the Fibonacci series. So here I'll say n1 equals 0 and n2 equals 1. Let me remove this pass. Then I'll use an infinite while loop and inside it, I will yield the value of n1. So here I'll say while true and inside it, I will yield n1. And then I'll update the values so that the next term will be the sum of the last two terms. So I'll say n1 comma n2 equals n2 comma n1 plus n2. If you're confused about what's happening here, what's happening is the sum of n1 and n2 is being assigned to n2 and n2 is being assigned to n1 all in a single line. Isn't Python sweet? Now let me print the first few elements in this series. Here I'll say, let me assign this iterator. So seq equals this. Now let me say print next seq and I'll copy this and paste it a few times. Oops. All right. When I run this code, you can see that the Fibonacci numbers has been generated. If we had used a for loop and a list to store this infinite series, we would have run out of memory. However, with generators, we can keep accessing these terms for as long as we want. It is because we are just dealing with one item at a time. At this point, we have covered the basics of Python generators. By the way, we can also create generators on the fly using generator expressions. If you want to learn more about it, you can check our article on our website programmers.com. The link will be in the video description below. Now I have a little assignment for you. Why don't you try and modify the generate Fibonacci function to instead generate an infinite stream of odd numbers. So you can call it generate underscore odd and then use the next method 10 times to print the first 10 odd numbers. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.